off one. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> oh, well, there we go. Okay. Fantastic. So we are live. Um, uh, welcome to, uh, to the first in, uh, in the new series of, um, uh, of live stream events that we're going to be doing for, um, uh, for Perfectly Soft. Um, and uh, today, um, well actually first of all I should introduce myself. Um, my name is Jonathan Guthrie. Um, most people know me as Jono. Um, on Slack I am also, um, I am Jono. Uh, now today um, we're going to discuss uh, a project that I created um, uh, maybe a couple of months back. Um, it was actually for my wife. Um, she was doing a university project and I uh, had to create a blog um, uh, and for, for some strange reason we did, decided we didn't want to use WordPress. Um, now very quickly if you want to ask some questions um, probably the easiest place to actually ask the questions is actually on our Slack channel. Um, either in the events channel or in the general it doesn't really matter. Um, if, you, um, uh, if you're wanting to actually get uh, get onto our Slack if you go to www.perfect.ly uh, then you can sign up through there and uh, and I'll actually just um, pull that up for you um, so perfect.ly um, so you'll see that there's a uh, um, the ability to put in your um, email address there it'll send you the Slack invite etc 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 okay so let's get started um, so the um, uh, the project is a, uh, is a is a simple blog, um, nothing particularly fancy, um, and uh, the address is www.relatablerachel.com, and uh, it follows the same uh, general principles as you know pretty much any blog. Um, it has uh, the the most recent one, most most recent entry on the right. It has uh, an ordered, um, you know, chronologically ordered uh, um, bunch of um, posts on the left. Um, you know, there's a menu up the top. Um, take, always takes you to home. It's got an about Rachel and about this blog. And yes, Rachel is my wife. Okay. So, uh, what makes this unique? Well, what makes it unique is the fact that it was built largely over the course of one weekend, um, and without too many late nights. Uh, and it's built in Swift. Okay, so let's have a um, have a quick look at uh, at how we um, administer it. So it's built using the Turnstile um, authentication with a Postgres backend, um, and so I'm just going to log in, and uh, for all intents and purposes, it looks exactly the same. So the whole point behind this is that. Um, we're wanting to administer most of this website and edit most of this website without much in the way of uh, of um, special screens and so forth. So if I want to go and edit the text, um, come down to here and um, I might see a typo. Um, would you cut your own hair? Well, look, my my answer to that one, as you can probably tell from um, uh, from my haircut, is that. Um, Currently, I don't. So um, I could actually, um, or you just um, simply don't. Okay, and I click outside that, and it saves the um, uh, the thing. I've got a typo, um, and or you just simply don't. Now, if I reload that page and scroll down, you'll see that the that the edit is actually stuck. Okay, so obviously that. We don't want that in there. I'm just going to edit it out. Okay. So the whole point is that the um, uh, the editing process is very very simple, very easily. Um, it's uh, um, what you see is what you get. Uh, everything's you know uh, just plain and simple. Okay. So I'm going to uh, now just switch to um, uh, the site admin. Okay, so on the menu on the top right, oh, I'd like to actually just also point out this whole system is actually open source. So you're able to actually go and download this, and uh, and I'll show you where very very soon. Um, you can download this. You can um, 
modify it for your own purposes. You can put in your own um, template because um, it's all using mustache and normal HTML and CSS. Um, so feel free to um, go play, improve, etc. Submit pull requests where I've made mistakes, etc. Okay. So site admin uh, gives us just a very very quick and easy way of. Um, John, yep. Sorry, we we get a question online here. People are asking uh, to see your screen. They can't. Uh, oh gosh. Yeah, they can, they can see you, but they can't see your screen. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, let's just change that, shall we? Um, oh, I didn't. Uh, I didn't change my um, uh, my viewpoint. Okay, so hopefully that's actually going to catch up with everyone very very soon. Um, let me just um, uh, flip back to. Uh, to repeat some of that uh, where I was showing the editing because you wouldn't have seen that. Okay, so here's uh, Rachel's site, um, relatablerachel.com, uh, and uh, on the right hand side is of course um, that initial post. On the left hand side is uh, um, is the recent posts. Um, I'll just go back to uh, to showing you very very quickly the editing process. Okay, so the DIY website website syndrome, uh, and there was the question about um, the analogies. Would you cut your own hair? Um, and as I said, from you know my video, you can probably actually see that I don't cut my own hair um, because I don't cut my hair at all. Um, so, or you wouldn't. Okay, and click outside. I reload the page, and there it is. Okay, I'm just going to remove that again. Fantastic. Okay, so uh, yes, um, I'll show you the process of logging in. Um, simple login, as I said before. It's actually using Turnstile, um, so it's uh, it's a simple login process. Um, there is no register on here. Um, that's very very deliberate um, because we obviously don't want people signing up to administer this. Um, and uh, under site admin, um, we're back to where we were before. Okay, so the site URL that's for um, various different linking. Um, you can uh, specify the um, uh, the title, subtitles, the subhead, um, and about. Um, we can add in things for the menu there, um, and uh, so that as you see the about Rachel and the link to about about this blog and Swift blog, they relate to, to these up here. Okay, so if I just click on about this blog, blah, 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 okay, and about Rachel. Doesn't she look pretty? Okay, fantastic. So, uh, then if we have a look down here with social and, and analytics, um, here we configure the various different things in terms of um, her email, her Twitter account, the anal analytics codes, etc. Um, the uh, the next one is the pages. This is where we uh, we can um, activate, deactivate the um, uh, the pages and the configuration. We can remove some if we wish. Um, we can create a new page. Okay, so let's create a new page here now, um, and uh, let's call this um, perfect. The page URL we're just going to say is going to be um, perfect. Type, uh, we'll call this one an, an article. Um, subhead, um, uh, this blog is perfect. Thank goodness for autocorrect. Now, date published, um, I, I'm going to put in there um, something a long time ago because we don't want this to actually appear at the top to start with. Um, so, 2012, um, 03, 01. Okay. I'm not actually going to put in a hero image. Now the hero image is the, is the one right at the top. Um, and an intro, blah, blah. We can add in uh, the various different things like the um, uh, a speci special page script or a meta description and go submit. Okay, let's put it at the top. You'll see that it's inactive on the right hand side. And I'm going to drag that right to the bottom. Okay, because we don't actually want that in the um, uh, at the top. Okay, so 
I'm going to activate that page. Um, and in theory, it should actually come down here. Yes, there it is. It's actually showing right down at the bottom on the on, on the left hand side. Um, but uh, interesting enough, what did I do wrong? Huh, that's interesting. Okay, well, look, um, let's let's not worry about that for now. Um, I, yes, there's a few bugs. And um, I haven't actually um, uh, updated the uh, the server side code for, um, uh, for for a while because I didn't want to um, break anything. Um, that's obviously a bug that I need to actually uh, fix. Okay, so let's have, let's go and have a look at the code because um, you don't really want to um, uh, watch me um, uh, um, navigate around a browser all the time. Okay, so. First of all, I should probably actually show you whereabouts it is. So we have a uh, a GitHub repository called um, uh, called GitHub.com slash perfect servers. Um, in there is um, is a few things that um, we've been working on that we um, we like to share. Um, currently, there are there are three things um, available for public consumption. Um, there's the Swift blog. Um, there's a Swift Slack, which is uh, if you go to um, uh, perfect.ly, which I showed you before. Um, this is a port of uh, a perfect port of uh, Slack in, um, so you can go and download that and and use that for your own um, uh, invite Slack uh, process to your own uh, um, Slack channels. And then there's the perfect log server. Um, but it's the Swift blog, which is the uh, which is the main thing that we're talking about today, obviously, and uh, so that's that's that there. Okay, right. Moving on. How are we going for time? Um, fantastic. So next code. Um, So I'm just going to make the um, uh, make this a little bit bigger. Um, fonts and colors. Um, okay. So hopefully that's a little bit bigger for everyone to actually see. Um, out in YouTube land. Um, so uh, let me just explain very very quickly about the packages that I've actually used by default here. Okay. So uh, there's a JSON configuration uh, utility which I use quite frequently. Um, and uh, this allows us to uh, to use a configuration uh, package that just simply reads in um, a custom configuration that can be overridden on a server um, for access to databases and etc. Okay. Um, then we have uh, the perfect turnstile Postgres um, library. Uh, we've got the perfect logger, um, a perfect HTTP server. Um, and the perfect request logger. The difference between the logger and the request logger is the fact the request logger is like your normal Apache or Nginx log, um, whereas the logger itself is actually uh, something that we can use to uh, to generate specific logs for specific events. Okay. Uh, so you'll notice that we have uh, a config directory, as I said before, and a web root di directory. This is where we have all of our um, uh, all of our mustache templates uh, in inside the views, and of course um, styles, images, assets, etc. Okay. Um, it's also worth noting that uh, that the images that are used inside the uh, the blog um, are intended to actually come from an S3 bucket. Okay. So uh, they're not stored locally. Nothing is stored custom locally in the actual um, blog uh, node. Um, this is designed to actually be um, distributed amongst a bunch of um, different nodes that then are um, load balanced. Okay, so uh, there's no uh, custom file um, uploads and so forth. It's all living in S3. Hey, Jono. Yep. So VJ just asked a question. Um, referring to uh, Xcode, so he's saying that Xcode uh, 8.3 beta 3 is in launch, so we have to use snapshots. What are you saying? 
Sorry, he's saying. So, looks like more of a beta three is launch. Okay, so um, yes and no. I I don't suggest that uh, you use um, the Xcode beta three um, uh, Xcode eight point three um, currently. Um, this so perfect is only certified to actually work currently with um, uh, with Swift three hundred two, which is um, comes with Xcode eight point two. Um, so I don't suggest that you actually use um, Xcode eight point three currently. Um, when eight point three is finalised uh, with obviously the um, uh, the snapshotted version of um, of Swift. Uh, which is probably going to be 3.1, um, then we will actually release uh, compatible, perfect um, libraries to um, to work with that. Okay, so uh, hopefully, VJ, that um, that answers your question. Um, so inside sources, you'll see all of the uh, um, all of the dependencies that have been brought in. Um, You'll notice that uh, that there is the ORM. There's the uh, all of the libraries that um, we other otherwise we need in terms of turnstile and um, uh, and the perfect other perfect libraries. Um, inside the Swift blog, um, uh, unfortunately, this is not set up the way I would normally now set things up uh, in terms of using an, an application template, which more accurately divides things. Um, but if we have a look at the main.swift, um, it's it's a very, very simple uh, um, web server. Uh, we have um, uh, a credentials, make credentials function um, that goes out and gets the um, uh, goes out and gets the application credentials and sets them to the um, uh, for the ORM. Um, we have uh, if I go back, um, we then have a setup system function um, that just goes through and uh, sets up all of the tables that we actually need um, in Postgres. Uh, moving on, we then have uh, we're setting up our HTTP server. Um, we're doing our auth routes, which come from uh, uh, from Turnstile, and then we've got um, uh, the um, add routes for the. Uh, for the pages and also for the administration. Okay, um, then we're setting up our HTTP logger, and then we're setting up our um, authentication um, inclusion and exclusion. Um, if you want to know a bit more about this, uh, that's all actually in the um, in the Turnstile documentation um, on the Perfect website. Um, and then we're setting our request and response filters and setting our um, uh, our server port and our document route, and then we start it. Okay, so not particularly complex. We're adding a bunch of stuff that uh, that is pretty normal to actually um, add. So up here uh, we have our um, server add routes, make routes. Okay, um, if we have a look down here under routes, we have our make routes function, and the entire um, blog system is actually made up of, uh, of, of three routes. Okay, um, we've got our home page, okay, uh, which is just the slash for get. Um, note that there are no post, no put, no nothing. The entire thing is actually segmented off to only um, use get um, for the um, uh, for public consumption. Okay, so we have a page handlers dot make home function. Um, then, if there is a page ID, now that page ID is usually actually the um, uh, the route. Then we've actually got uh, the um, page handlers dot make page. Uh, if we're looking at tags, then there is a make tag page um, function as well. So the whole thing is actually meant to be driven around uh, these variables. Okay, so how do we use these variables? If we go and have a look at the page handlers dot make page function. Um, we just go to pages.swift. Oh, sorry, I'm wrong. Uh, handlers.swift. Okay, the page handlers uh, class has a grand total of uh, of three functions. Okay, those three f static functions are the same ones that we were pointing to before, and so we've got our make home, and that just simply goes through and gets the things that uh, that we need to display, 
and is adding things to the context. If we scroll all the way to the bottom of this function. We're setting up a context which is then passed to um, the template. Okay, I'm not going to go into this one in detail right now because uh, I'm not wanting to, uh, to to make this a um, a particularly technical uh, um, live stream event. Um, but if you want to go and have a look at this and dissect it and uh, want to ask me how um, it all fits together, um, then uh, ping me on the probably the help channel in, um, in Slack and, uh, and I can lead you through how all of this actually fits together. In general, so Vijay's got another question. Um, mostly, which, mostly which pattern do we use with this, like passing data from one class to another? Okay, so uh, in terms of if you're looking at uh, the routes, okay, then there is you'll notice that there's actually no data that it seems as though we're passing um, into this class. Okay, what we're actually looking at here is um, it's all being driven from this page ID variable. Okay, so this page ID variable is the same as um, if we go back to uh, uh, let me see. Building a website is like um, how building a website is like landscaping a garden. Okay, so that there is the uh, is the um, the page ID. Okay, that's passed into the uh, the routing function, and that's how we actually determine uh, where the match is. So let me just quickly log back in again and. Um, if we go and have a look at the pages, okay. Um, building a website is like build is like landscaping and garden. Okay, ah, shouldn't have. Um, what I actually wanted to do is click on the config. Okay, you see here that it's got a page URL. So um, uh, the page URL is the page ID string. Okay. So we go back to here and we look at the fact that um, it's passing into make page this page ID, um, which then if we go and have a look at our handlers, uh, coming up to the top, um, it's the, the handler is actually passing in the request and the response um, objects to directly manipulate both incoming and outgoing. Okay, uh, so try page select, oh sorry, we want to go to um, the make page, here we go, so make page. Um, let page ID equals request.url values page ID. So that's actually getting from uh, from our routes page ID. Okay, that comes straight, straight through as a variable in the URL variables um, uh, dictionary. Okay, so then it's actually looking for um, and matching the page ID um, in the select in the ORM. Okay, so hopefully that answers how you're uh, getting, you're, you're passing uh, information into that function. Um, if we were to go and have a look at the administration functions, then what we're doing is we're actually using um, uh, both JSON and uh, in the body, and also um, more usually we're actually using form parameters. Okay. Um, so that's coming in from the request into the function. Okay, everything else in terms of the interactions um, uh, between classes and between um, functions within classes is actually via the normal design pattern of uh, of as you can see we're passing um, you know select which is a function in the ORM columns the where clause parameters etc. Okay, so. Uh, as much as possible, what I've tried to do is I've tried to use a um, uh, a unidirectional data flow. Um, sometimes I've uh, through this one here. Sometimes I've um, broken that uni that unidirectional data flow pattern towards a um, uh, a two way. Now, um, my personal philosophy is that design patterns are great until you need to break those design patterns. And if, you, and if you're going to break those design patterns, you break them for a very good reason, okay? Sometimes you need to actually uh, be very clear about why you are breaking those design patterns and you must, must document your code, okay? Um, I haven't documented my code hugely here, 
but there is some documentation. Um, normally what I actually do is if I'm just writing, um, I will just write code. If I'm writing and I'm aware that I'm breaking an established design pattern, I will start to document. Um, and uh, usually when I'm writing for, um, for an example, I will try and document my code more as well so that others can actually discern the reason why I've done something. Okay, hopefully that answers your question. Um, uh, the reality is that uh, uh, it's all about the reason why you need to do something, document it, okay? Uh, so if we go up to the admin handlers, which was the other one that I actually uh, um, referenced, um, then uh, you'll notice that um, uh, that I've started to uh, to have to uh, to add a little bit more. Let me see a little bit more logic in terms of um, uh, request dot param name title and then give a um, a default value. Um, so uh, this is an example of how you would um, uh, bring in um, specifically named uh, uh, um, processes. You'll notice that also I'm actually if request method equals post. Um, so therefore I've got all of the, uh, the specific information, uh, sorry, specific directives about what happens if it's a post versus what happens if it's a get. So. Uh, the reason why I wanted to show you that is that if I go back to admin routes, okay, you'll notice that I've actually passed both um, the get and the post uh, method into the w with the same URL into the same function. Now sometimes uh, you can decide to uh, to change things. Um, I've decided here to actually have a simple context switch. One of the reasons for that is that um, uh, if uh, if I want to have a completely different response if it's a post versus if it was a get, then I would have different functions. But in this particular case, I've actually uh, elected to have the get and the post both go to the same function because, and this is the because, after I finish the, uh, the save component, okay, which comes all the way down to here, um, and I'm saving the components and the subs. Okay, end save component. Then I'm just simply displaying it again. Okay, so uh, if I was to uh, redirect afterwards after a save to uh, the um, to a different page, then I would have a different function for that save, and then afterwards I would have a um, a redirect. In this particular case, I am just simply uh, going to display exactly the same thing again. So it makes sense to just wrap that into the same function. I could, yes, I could have a um, uh, follow more um, functional um, uh, programming uh, processes, but as I said, this was actually written um, in the course of one weekend in my own time. So I was, uh, I must admit, I probably cut a few, um, uh, a few corners. Okay. Uh, the one last thing is how do we do the uh, the, um, the the saving of the um, of the information for the page? So if we go to admin routes, okay, and uh, let me see, um, we want a post, and okay, I'm actually not going to cover that too much here. But if you have a look um, under the save, let's go and have a look at, um, at what happens when we, uh, when we want to modify a page. Okay, so I'm going to um, open up the, um, uh, the network um, tab. And um, I'm going to add, um, in fact, I'm just going to remove that additional space. Okay and I'm going to save. Okay, so you notice here that it's actually sent an XHR post request. Okay, so it's sent to admin pages 12 save. Now the reality is that um, I'm being a little bit naughty there because I've actually exposed the, uh, the specific page ID. Normally you would actually obfuscate that, 
um, so that the 12 would actually be um, a uh, an encrypted um, uh, string that would then be decrypted on the server and all this actually is um, relating to page ID 12 fantastic now I'm gonna um, interpret and save that okay but if we go back to then the um, uh, the route that is admin pages 12 save so admin pages ID save okay it's going through to the blog admin um, pages admin save content okay jump to definition so you'll see now that this is actually intending to be a JSON uh, um, a, a JSON oriented function okay so uh, if content um, does not equal the request param name content then we're just simply going to reject that um, uh, that entire request okay so in other words if there is no um, content submitted it's going to reject it okay then uh, we're uh, bringing in the um, uh, the ID and if there's no get which is loading it uh, then it's actually going also going to error um, and it's actually setting the various different uh, um, bits and pieces to uh, that we want to save and we're going to um, save the content and then we're going to uh, just simply um, send back the response saved okay if it was okay so if we go and have a look at the um, uh, at what that was, resources, XHRs, and save, you'll see that it actually said saved OK. So um, it's a relatively simple system. It's not particularly complex. Um, once again, uh, if if you have any questions about how this is actually handled, um, and uh, you'll and I'll show you the database in a moment. Um, then please uh, um, please let me know directly on Slack. I can lead you through some of these things um, later on. Uh, if we're going to have a look at the database itself, um, my local Postgres. Uh, in fact, I'll show you the um, uh, the public Postgres. Okay. So inside uh, site is just simply a um, a site ID, a URL, and then it's um, JSON B. Now. Um, uh, I've, I've elected to use um, uh, Postgres as um, binary JSON or BSON uh, processes um, simply because of the fact that uh, it allows me to have configurations that have no structure aka no SQL um, and I can query these I can um, do finds within them uh, and that in actual fact is how the pages are actually structured too so you'll notice that we have uh, the uh, the URL, um, which is the main thing that things are actually found on. Okay, uh, and then we have uh, configs that are once again an open. Uh, uh, the configurations are effectively an open schema um, process. Uh, it means that we have to actually be a little bit more careful about um, interpreting them and making sure that um, we're not unwrapping. Um, uh, you know, force unwrapping optionals and causing the application to to, um, uh, to blow up because we force unwrapped something. Um, and once again, if you want to learn about how to query the NoSQL stuff uh, within um, Postgres, there's a lot of documentation out there. Um, I can also show you some quick examples. Um, now, one of the main things is that that body that we were looking at before is not actually saved in the um, in the page record itself. It's actually saved in a component. Um, so you'll notice that uh, that we have um, uh, some subheads, some about, some bodies, um, Twitter, Facebook, etc. And uh, it's actually the, the, these things are actually saved in here as um, related table contents. Okay, so it's basically a join. All right. So that's pretty much the, uh, the, the guts of what we actually do here. Um, if you want to run this locally, obviously you, have to, uh, obviously you have to have a local Postgres that's set up um, with permissions. Uh, you would make sure that your application configuration is, um, uh, is set correctly. Um, 
and uh, then of course the web route um, and we just show you very very quickly um, the reason why um, we have to do the custom working directory so I've gone and edited the scheme and I have selected uh, the working directory use custom working directory and I have actually got it um, set to go to a very specific place okay um, that means that when we run the uh, um, from Xcode it actually knows exactly whereabouts to find everything um, and uh, we can load everything and it will run just fine like so and that's actually just simply my local development area um, so if you uh, if you want to develop locally you can do so um, if you uh, if you want to make changes, configuration to the user interface, as I said before, it's actually in the web route. Um, and yeah, so any other questions that have arisen? Nope. No. Here. Okay. So because we've uh, we've uh, we've reached the um, the end of uh, the designed um, time, um, I'm going to log off now. If anyone has any specific questions, please ask me. Um, on Slack. Uh, once again, that uh, that Slack channel is uh, www.perfect.ly. Uh, put in your email there, you'll get an invite, and uh, then um, you'll be able to jump into uh, the um, uh, the Slack channel. Okay. So, enjoy. Thank you very much.